Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Man from Osirian, The Infernal Vault. The year is 4707 by the Pathfinder Galarian calendar. When last we left the scholar, Master Arif, and the notorious, well, soon to be notorious, well, I guess you're kind of new to town, a Lady Kitsune by the AKA-ness of... I came out wrong. Foxglove. Who is currently, currently, at her own townhouse, switching identities, and has reappeared at the door as what is known as the Vigilante Class's social identity. And what is your name? Social identity? Alexi Bordana. Alexi Bordana. Greets you at the door, Master Arif. Let's you in. Here's your tale. And now has to address the urgency that Master Arif wishes to report to the Watch and possibly the Pathfinder Society because of what he's experienced. Pathfinder Society. Well, who are they? They're a group of people that want to preserve lore. And since Master Arif was kidnapped, smuggled into a townhouse, into a special secret vault at the bottom of that townhouse, getting glimpses after through his little mesh bag on his head, and then brought to a stone, concealed shelved all stone library with endless endless tomes books scrolls made to translate something not even thanked for his time or paid bagged and tagged again and loaded on a cart and rescued by the fox club down by the docks this is why we want to involve the pathfinder society this is why he wants to involve the pathfinder society but the scene begins at the dock itself do you remember that poor, innocent, bad guy sailor slash mercenary that you beat up, left for dead, bleeding out. I believe I killed him. Possibly. As his fellows come upon him and scoop him up and get him out of there, along comes one man, a buccaneer, What's a buccaneer? Well, basically it's a rogue with a gun. This buccaneer goes by the name of Kip. He is just enjoyed a night in the taverns off of his last pay, is running low on funds, feeling the rum, and is walking along the docks. Hopefully, hopefully, to garner new employment. He hears... A scuffle. He creeps low to investigate. He watches an exchange between three people. And he sees two of them slip off into the night. Coming across a body, little he can do for this gentleman, he's dead. And a whole bunch of angry sailors are coming running up on the dock. Welcome to the show. One of our staple role mongers, Mr. Ryan Messina, is in the house. Hey, glad to be here. So, Kip, what do we see in this dim, dim, I wouldn't say gaslight, torchlit dock? As you quickly must make a decision. Follow them, get away, stand and explain yourself to the sailors, help the dead guy, call for the watch yourself. What would you do? What would you do? Well, my flask, my flask it has still some whiskey left in it from the tavern that I managed to uh, escond with. I would not want to ruin the buzz that I have obtained from this evening. And those sailors do not look like the type of sailors I like to associate with. So I would wish to partake away from them. Okay. Into the night you steal? Yes. All right. A short time later. Ten minutes. Half an hour. Maybe even an hour. We're caught up to the scene with Frank Hamilton is also in the house playing Master Arif, the star of our show. Yay. Uh, Hey, guys. It's me, Frank. (laughs) So, Mr. Hamilton. Matt calling Mr. Hamilton. Master Arif. The strange woman of the night. Again, that came out wrong. Um that uh, deposits you 
on a noble woman's or a noble merchant's doorstep has, well, vanished, left you with a neighbor, and then this woman appears. Here's your tail, takes you in, you know, gets you a drink. Where where are you now? What mindset are you on? Are you in? Are you just glad it's over? Are you in shock? Are you, you know, desperate to get somebody get the watch or the Pathfinder Society, as we've implied? You know, where's uh, where's Master Arif's headspace at this moment? Well, you know, it's a, a, a great number of things have happened here, here recently, and it, 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 it's all kind of befuddled the mind. I, I would normally tell the watch, but but they're quite incapable in, in this neighborhood, especially at this hour. So uh, uh, the the pathfinders they they typically delve into these kinds of things. So we should seek them out. Yes, quite a capable group. So. Uh, uh, my lady, do you know where the, the nearest uh, guild house is? Uh, we, we should head that way. It's about a few blocks away. Well, uh, I, I finished my refreshment. Thank you. And, and, and let's be off. Let me just grab my coat. Back into the night, the two of you stride. Getting a, shall we say, a late night audience or a late evening audience with none other than the venture captain of Absalon's, well, who, not, not him personally, but whoever, you know, <laughs> whoever will see you at the door at the, at the lodge. <clears throat> venture captain Drandall Drengs actually is uh, <clears throat> a little, you know, maybe he's napping, maybe he's in the middle of his supper, but whatever they pull him from, you eventually gain an audience with him and tell him your story. He, in turn, assures you that the matter will be taken care of. He will garner his best pathfinders for the job and set them upon the townhouse, asking you again for the address as quickly as possible. Since neither one of you are pathfinders, he helps you along your way by basically getting you a safe carriage, safe passage, the proverbial taxi ride to wherever you want to go. Uh, He takes note of your names and tells you that the society owes you a favor for this information. And you find yourselves back on the street, not completely convinced that this guy is going to do anything. What do you do? So uh, to the watch? Well, I mean, I, I'm, I don't have much that I could actually tell the watch, but, but sure. I mean, I, I leave it into your capable hands after all. I, I'm all rather new to this whole kidnapping and hauling off business. I would feel better if we at least went to the watch. That way there's at least two people looking into it, you know, if one does not follow through on his word. Redundancy. Yes, yes. I I can appreciate that. I too have felt redundant, so shall we? After you. And we will uh, make our way kind of down the road there. Yep. Uh, Carriage paid for Uh, to the closest watchtower. Watch quarters. Relatively close. Yeah. Okay. A sudden jolt in the carriage. And you hear the horses, you know, knee, nay in protest. And the driver is yelling out, somebody needs to watch where he's going. Um, then the driver has a quick muffled conversation with someone. And agrees to, you know, as sort of an apology, perhaps, um, give the guy a free ride. Perhaps this gentleman uh, <clears throat> convinced the driver it was his fault through intimidation, diplomacy, or whatnot. Anyway, next thing you know, someone is clamoring into the carriage beside you. I wouldn't say oh. he reeks of rum, but he you do notice. Spirit. Yeah. You do notice that there is a little bit of an odor on him. Um, Kip, would you describe yourself, please? Kip has nothing but the finest attire. He has spared no expense. He has a magnificent uh, bandolero filled with many trinkets that he's obtained over his years and time. He has hat with a magnificent hat with a feather of a rare exotic bird plumed out to existence and beyond. <laughs> Is that like the Tricon, Tricorn hat? You kind of look, the picture you got going on there kind of looks like Captain Morgan. 
Captain Morgan wishes he had my goat, my beard. I'm oh, sorry, apologies. Yeah. Please no, continue. But yes, so keep his dress to the nines. He looks almost as well as he sounds. Yeah, and he has a few uh, weapons that he doesn't mind placing out in the open. He has a pistol box on his one hip, and he has a sword on the other. And then the handle, they are each inscribed by their names. Who and then who mean? That is thunder and lightning in common. So you have a brace of pistols? It's, no, no. I have one pistol and I have one sword. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Yes. And which one's the pistol and which one's the sword? Uh, Torne. Thunder. Thunder is the pistol. And Fulmini, the lightning, is the sword. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, double lightning himself rolls into the carriage with you guys. Kind of scooches old man Arif out with a hip. And the, you're, uh, my lady, you're faced, well, with two men. The elderly gentleman who you rescued off of a cart, who doesn't know it's really you. And this newcomer, who... Well, got himself a free ride. Excuse me, excuse me, please, pardon me. Uh, senior, if you would please sit over some. You're hogging the majority of the seat and your frame is too small to demand the entirety of it. Well, uh, we were under the impression that this was our carriage, so uh, he was well within his right to sit in the middle of the seat. Yeah, ownership is always a negligible thing. At this moment, I only own this portion of the seat. You own that portion and he owns this portion. You can attempt to own this portion, but I would be entertained to see you take both. The carriage heaved ho and sort of throwing Kip down into the spot he was motioning, whether Master Erf was ready to scoot over. But uh, those lightning hazu sandals that you wear, Master Erf, fail you not, and you manage to stick out a scrawny leg and drag yourself out before the man just kind of glops right down into the seat beside you, and the carriage is away, heading to its last destination, unless Kip changed course, to a watchtower. Ah. Uh, don't mind me if I partake while uh, we get quit to our journey place. Uh, senor, senora, do you care? Do you really need more spirits? You already reek of them. Hey, this is not spirits. This is whiskey. Do you need more alcohol? You reek of it. The question is, do I not need any more alcohol? It's seeping out of your pores. Then I have maintained where I need to stay. Well, very well. More for Suit yourself. We are going to the watch. Oh, the watch. Why would you waste your time going to the watch? It's none of your business. Hey, as the watch is none of mine. A short time later, we pull up in front of the watchtower. And um, the driver begs a moment of you, Master Kip, um, uses the sort of facility as it were to quickly you know ask them pay them to little nibble for the horse you know some quick water for him and the horse kind of thing just just to stop before he heads out so it's a sort of like a safe gas station as it were kind of thing so you find yourself sitting alone in the carriage as these two exit and head into the watchtower itself master Arif. yes yes you've been taking the closest watch tower um, inside you find a lineup of people that are being processed, people with complaints, you know, there's no telephone to phone the cops. So if you don't like what the neighbor's doing, you send your kid or, you know, your husband or whatever to run down to the local watchtower and complain. So there's this list of complainers, you know, the neighbors are being too loud. Um, I swear there's you know, so-and-so stole my chickens out of my pet, this, this type of thing. And this is the line they direct you to, you know, things the watch should know from citizens. They dump you in this line. It is long. What do you do? I'll look, look around. Uh, excuse me. It, it, I was kidnapped. Is this the correct line to be in? Um, you, you, you there. Have you been kidnapped? Some watchman says, well, you're here now. And they laugh. Well, well, I don't mean I'm 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 not currently kidnapped. I I mean I I was I, I was taken, and and then you know, I, I I was on a boat, and then in a building, and then a wagon, and then and now I'm here. So so who who needs to to know these things? I I'm not where I'm supposed to be. 
I should be in bed. <laughs> He's having a hard go of it, my lady. Is there anything you wish to do to assist? I'm assuming like as, a, as a vigilante, the social, uh, the social identity might have some perks in this situation. Yes, she is uh, very well known as a well known scholar in the area, and she would like to diplomatize her way to the front of the line. She is not one for waiting. All right. Um, how about a perception check? Okay. Seventeen. Uh, it's not about making your way to the front line because you'd have to talk to all the complainers and the citizenry and whoever's at the front handling these people would just insist you're at the back of the line. But going off of what Master Arif said, there is a desk that's attended that doesn't look like, you know, you're supposed to lie him up in front of it. However, the documents that someone are, is processing, you kind of get the idea that this is the type of person that might know who you are. You may have some influence over, you know, just kind of go over to the side and Hey, buddy. Absolutely. Sir, could I have a moment of your time, please? Huh? Oh, hello. Um, this gentleman was dropped off at my home. It appears he was kidnapped. We need to file a report. You Can mind. you speak up, please? My eyes aren't what they used to be. This gentleman was dropped off at my home. He seems to have been kidnapped. We need to file a report with a watch, please. Oh, he turns and looks at the empty chair that you're standing next to because you haven't pulled Arif out of line. And he's like, oh, I'm very sorry for your trouble, sir. We'll see if we can't get your process right away. Yeah. He, anyway, he starts, she starts shum, shuffling through forms and everything. And he's like, okay, what do we got here? Pardons, uh, kidnapping, uh, missing persons. Well, I guess you're not missing your hair. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, here we as go. He's, right. <clears throat> as he is mumbling, she will reach back and. Yeah, okay, go and over and get <laughs> Arif up over on the line there. Okay. Sit him down on the chair. So, Master Arif, um, <clears throat> the lady that's helped you thus far drags you out of line, pulls you over to some side desk in a corner, plunks you in a chair, and some guy's like, hey, can I, could you say your name for the record, please? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, my, my name is Arif. Al Basir Afif. Arif, all balls of the thief. Got it. And uh, you? That, 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 that's not quite right. No, Al Basam Afif. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Al Basam the thief. Got it. Thief. And you? Uh, and are, you? are you paying attention, man? Let me I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, man. You got to speak up. My eyes aren't what they used to be. I, I'm afraid that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, <laughs> but why we're here also doesn't make any sense. See, I, I, I was snatched away. Snatched away. Can, can you hear me? I, I was taken from the libraries in, in the uh, lower wards. And, 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 and a bag was thrown upon my head and I was carried off to, the, to this place. I couldn't see where I was. And I was forced by threat of violence, I think. By threat that's, of violence, to travel a paper from one language to another, and then back into the to the common tongue. It, it, so it, it's very bizarre, but but I suspect that uh, uh, th 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 these people they're they're up to no good. Okay, okay. Anyway, he's filling in lines and reasons, like trying to keep up with you. So it's like <clears throat> complaint, kidnapped, uh, you know. Um, abuse, forced to transcribe. He's scribbling this down. Uh huh? Uh huh? Yeah. Okay. 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 Kind of thing. Uh, anyway, he's going on and on. Um, so remind me with the vigilante class, um, Ashley. The um, you have a fame role. You have something. Someone that does it just give you a bonus to your diplomacy if you run into someone like this guy who runs in your circles, or is there a fame role I got to do? Um, give me just a moment. Sure. Going back to Kip for a moment in the carriage. Yes. You're waiting. You're waiting. And, you know, they're taking forever. You know, this this, this 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 free ride that you could have got, which started going the wrong way. Um, the guy just takes his sweet time. Minutes start ticking by as far as, um, you know, waiting for him to come back and see the horse and all this kind of thing. You're just kind of sitting in the carriage. Bottle's getting low. By the laws of the crack, and one would think that when one is so close to death that they would hurry up with the things that they do in their life. 
Oh. Well. Hey, driver. No response. Oh, Evie. Get out of the carriage. Walk around. Okay. okay. Driver. Um, nobody there. He could possibly be up on the top, but you want to climb up and see if he's... You can come around the side, but... Okay, take a look. Why is he coming okay. up on Okay, there? start clambering up. So, suddenly, as you're sort of like one foot on the rail, looking up just to make sure he's not, you know, like leaning down the seat or whatever, um, two watchmen come out of the actual watchtower and one slaps you on the back and gives you an address. Hurry, man. My cell phone's going off. Sorry, that's, that's a home line. <laughs> Rule number one, never, never address the mistake. Just roll with it. So. I feel like things are going. <laughs> what is this magical device you have? <laughs> Excuse me, I got to take this. Um, no, seriously. Uh, Watchman, you know, slaps you on the back as if to, like, get you up in that seat. And we need to go to this address, like, right now on the east side. Uh, kind of a perception check, please. They start clamoring into the case. The carriage. Nine. Okay. Um, so, two watchmen get in. You don't seem anything amiss. Do you help them? Do you explain to them? Do you take them where they want to go? Hmm. Yeah, this has nothing to do with keep. It will leave. Okay, so oh. <laughs> just hop off and walk away. Yeah, this is not my carriage, and to be honest, it's kind of tacky for me to steal this one. Okay, so you're walking away, and they lean out. Hey, buddy, where are you going? This is an emergency. By order, then and he, just, did, he talk, talks about some kind of like commission order where the watch can commandeer a civilian vehicle and a civilian. And they quote this to you. We commission this vehicle, we commission you. They think it's one package. They're not realizing that you're two separate things, but technically by law, you well, can, yes. you know, ass assist the watch and they, they're asking for it. Very well, then keep all the seats where he came. Okay. Uh, I, all right. I, I adjust the seat. Yep. <laughs> On with it, man. Go, driver. So can yeah. I have a knowledge local while well, you're trying to figure out where they want to go? And we'll get back to... Um, Oh, this is going uh, I, we, call, we keep calling you like my lady, but uh, can I have that name one more time, Ashley? Alexi Bardana. Lady Bardana. So it says that she, it just says that she is, her social identity is a known expert in numerous fields. Right. So um, you can do a fame check if you would like, um, but there's nothing, I mean, it just says she's known. There's nothing, it doesn't give you any. Okay. Let me bust out my man from Assyrian dice. Well, they're mummy's mass dice, but one can hope to dream. <laughs> I'll give you a percentage chance. So we know. Okay. So anyway, he's he's going along, you know, that kind of thing. He's filling, him and Arif are back and forth. And this guy, uh, you can see why he has this desk job. It's very tedious, probably, with the documentation. And this guy takes his time. And they probably couldn't use him doing anything else. Like I said, he keeps asking for Arif to talk louder and louder because he can't see him. Um, so now Arif in, uh, compliance, you know, trying to explain his plight is very, very loudly explaining the entire story and garnering a larger audience. Watchmen are stopping what they're doing. Criminals are listening in. Oh, that's very cool. East End, you say, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, and then he identifies who he believes the mercenary crew is. The Devil's Claw. Out of Chiliax, he heard slip. When we get down to like, you know, do you, can you describe them? Um, you know, did you have any contact with them? Do you have any known enemies on the form? And all he has is that name. You didn't tell me this. Are you sure, Arif? Uh, I'm, I'm quite certain. Yes, it was, it, it was 
reminded me of like the monkey claw, but but that's a totally different story, you know, based on Alma's Codex of Uncertain Things. It's a, it's a story that I read uh, uh, quite a ways back. So, so, so yes, um, uh, Devil's Claw, yes, uh, uh, that's it. It, it's quite certain. Nearby, nearby, reading a bounty board where bounty hunters, civilians, adventurers can come in and problems that aren't just whispered in the local tavern that are legal problems where you'd have to come down to the watch, get a permit to hunt, to solve, to arrest, you know, do the bounty hunter thing. Um, A lone woman stands looking disgusted at the little and beneath her type forms flipping through and the name, the devil's claw sort of crosses the room. Also, Ashley, as we prepare to do a handoff, would you describe your new character for us, please? Her name is Ariadne Felstar. She is a slayer. Um, generally, she takes she takes care of problems that people have. What does she look like? Um, she is. You know, general height, about five foot five for a woman. She, uh... Is she human? She is not human. What is she? She she is an Ifrit. Ooh. Uh, Out of Katapesh, actually, that's sort of Arif's corner of the world. Across the inner sea, uh, next to Assyrian, which is sort of Egypt on the fantasy world, we have an Arabic uh, country known as Katapesh, the land of the genies. And genies and humans get along really well sometimes, and their descendants have a sort of elemental gene in them. And we have sylphs for air and undine for water. We have, I forget the one for earth. Help me out here, Ryan. What's the earth one? Oh, um, Shaitan. Is it Shaitan for earth? That's the genie. What do they call the people that come out of it? The genocide, as it were. Don't know? Shy turds. <laughs> no, 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 That's no, our no. word. That's our <laughs> You can't use that word. And last but not least, from the Frit, the fire, we have the... Sorry, the Friti? The Frit? We have the Frit from the fire genies. So we have a woman that I'm assuming either has a dark blackish lava skin or red or orange. What kind of color tones are we rocking here underneath the outfit? She has white skin, but she has blackened scales that kind of run up her arms and oh. upper calves. She cool. has uh, red horns that kind of curl along her brow, but she's able to hide that with her hair. Um, okay. And her ears are pointed. Oh. She has long, dark hair. Ooh. So sort of a, you get the sort of dark flame or black flame going on as opposed to the, the iconic red and orange hair and everything. Very cool. Oh, she, ha- she has very bright orange and red clothing, but her, she herself. Oh. <laughs> Trying dark. to make up for something. The rest of my, just so you know, I'm one of these people. <laughs> Making a statement. Okay. I was going to say, so do you, do you dress the camouflage? Nope. You're out there. Nope. That's good. Very proud. Um, and uh, like I said, the... Chalaxian Devil's Claw is a mercenary group that obviously would be unwelcome here. And if there's an entire group, I'm not saying you should take this on alone, but intel on them would be valuable as opposed to. So now we picture the scene where this person is drifting away from the board and a little bit over to the, the desk to eavesdrop. Uh, Lady Bard- Bardana <clears throat> really wanting to get back to her watch as Foxglove, because we know you're Batman or Batgirl. Um, and Arif just patiently but loudly trying to work this guy through the entire form. Off into the night, rides Kip with his local knowledge of... Survey says... 19. Ooh, okay. They want to go to the east quarter. Right over here. Uh, and they arrive... At a townhouse. Well, here you are at your destination. You can then keep later. Yep. They uh, they get you to stop a block away. They get out and they start creeping up on this place. And they don't ask you to stay. They're like, you know, you better clear the area, you know. 
No, no, well, Kibo will go. Okay. Take, new, take my carriage away. Okay. So this is your new carriage, taxi of the night, or you head, head back to the watchtower so Buddy can have it back. Congratulate yourself as hero of the night. Hmm. This sounds good. Carriages burn, and they don't float too well. So you okay. st start I making your way back across town <clears throat> to, I, the, uh, I do, to the watch. I do a bit of a pub crawl on the way. Okay. This time delay is consistent to what's going on back at the watchtower. So at the end of his patience, and finally getting near the end of the forms, Master Arif, clearly frustrated with this man, and the constant stroking out. I mean, the top of the page for the name alone has several strokes because he's writing it in ink, trying to just get the thief out of his name alone. Took 10 minutes. Um, down to the very end. Great, thank you. You know, stamp, drop your blood, all this kind of thing, this, this type of thing. And um, he rolls up the paper, hands it to you, and asks you to get into another line. <laughs> You've been processed, but, you know, to actually get an officer on duty... You gotta go over there. So luckily, there's hardly anybody in this line. And up you go, hand it over. They look at it. They look it over, and almost immediately assign two officers, who like literally go, you know, like grab, you know, Floyd, Mike, off you go, and they head running out the door to investigate. Yay! They ask you if you'd like a ride home, back to your bed. Thank you. You've done us a service. Um, you know, do you guys mention that you actually already contacted the Pathfinder Society? Mm, there's no reason to volunteer extra information, I don't think. I, okay. I certainly don't mention it. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a horse from, from shouting at this imbecile across the hallway there. Okay. Just trying to make my point across. I said, I said five, five of them. He still can't hear me. It's ridiculous. I, I, I'm just fed up. Would you mind feel... speaking up? My eyes aren't what they used to be. I don't feel like they need the information, so I, for one, would not volunteer it. Okay. So, Lady Bordana, what's your next move? He's been processed twice. Once by the Pathfinder Society, once by the cop shop, you know. And now he's I just would... kind of sitting out of line. If they're going to give him a ride home, I would see him to his carriage and then slip off. Okay. All right. Um, Master Arif, you do have a carriage uh, outside. You assume it's gone. So they ask you if you want, like, you know, a police escort safely home, or they turn to a citizen. I, I, I would appreciate you know. that greatly. Yes, it, 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 it's quite a walk. Mm -hmm. Yep. Down the promenade there, so so nice. Okay. Um, out of nowhere, a brightly colored woman steps up and starts using diplomacy to take you off the watch's hands, calling in a favor, calling the guy by name, saying, I got this. You guys are busy. I'll see that, you know, you know, my reputation, you know, how dangerous I am. I'll get him home safe. No problem. That kind of thing. I'd, I'd feel almost like a like a package. Nineteen diplomacy. I've been okay. Diplomacy. Off several times. I mean, I, I just I just want to go home. So whoever's supporting <laughs> me, let's go. Well, can I have the the RP version of the setup I just handed you there, uh, new Ashley? Because I forgot your name already. Oh, Master Arif, I will take you home. It's no problem at all. Uh, Don't worry, gentlemen. I know exactly where he lives. We'll be perfectly fine. I, I, I'm only mildly confused, but whatever. This is progress. So. <laughs> oh, you you know this guy? Says the, the new yeah, guy at the absolutely. new desk. Seriously, what is he, like your grandfather or something? Funny enough, both of you guys hail from Katapesh. So they literally ask, yeah, was this guy like your grandfather or something? Close, A close friend of my grandfather. No, worry not. Oh, I don't know. 19 and the dm kind of like totally handed you this gift wrap i, I think i want to hear some role-playing before i just hand them off what was the original uh argument that you had there three, three seconds ago before the dm glossed over it there miss uh what's your name ariety fellstar miss fellstar 
Hey, aren't you the broad that brought in Mikey the knife last week? Was that you? That was me. Ah. And then he, his, face goes, his, his face goes completely he... flat and he's like, you really should let the watch handle matters like that. You, you vigilantes well, you know, you know, and, and bounty hunters, you know, blah, blah, just starts going. Obviously, this guy does not promote that board that's over there going, hey, you know, the watch needs your help. Crime well, stoppers. you know, I, I did grab it from your board. I heard that he was giving you guys a run around. I just I know you guys work so very hard. I was just trying to make your life easier. I apologize. I will I will not step on your toes ever again. I'm so very sorry. All right. All right. You know, it, it, it's late. Just just take him and go. Anyway, turns to the old guy and says, hey. You know her? You want to go with her? Cramps. W without even turning to look at her. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Holds his arm out, you know, waiting for her to take it. She anybody, take it. Anybody's going to be better than five minutes in this place. Okay. Now, what about um, Lady Bordana, who's still here, like waiting for her chance to go off into the night, though? Are you still going to hand your charge off to this very suspicious looking bounty hunter? I know it's with up within player's interest, player versus yourself, but, you know, staying Eric, in character. Are, are you sure you know her? I don't, rather... think I, know, I don't think I know anybody anymore. Would you prefer me to hire you a carriage to go home? I have the means. I just don't have the patience anymore for, for, for one more moment here. By the gods, I understand now why violence erupts in places like this. Would you prefer me to escort you home? If that's what it takes, then let's go. <sighs> All right. So... Because of the lineups, because of the paperwork, I literally, um, I know I'm kind of pushing this, but you guys step out and up rolls a familiar looking half drunk sailor carriage, you know, like he took it for a spin. What there are is. you doing driving the carriage? Are you it's serious? Not... You're drunk. Yes, when it keeps not drunk. Where is the carriage driver? I don't know. Probably inside filing a missing carriage report would be my guess. Camera slides off? right back inside the door and there's like a guy in line up who's just like telling the guy in front of him, man, please, can I can I cut in line? They'd like, dude took my carriage. It's my lifestyle. No. No? I just, I no Arif one sees the humor in that. <laughs> Arif kind of feels himself being towed along. He looks back towards the guard station. Perhaps I've made a mistake. <laughs> How about I drive the carriage and you all get inside? They will. Keep as many more important things to do. Okay, keep off the top. Okay. The so, door. Lady Bordana herself, scholar of some renown, takes the reins and into the carriage now piles Kip, Master Arif, and a new woman that neither one has really taken the time to have a good look at. Oh, Kip takes a good look at. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit it's more? Not, it's not even shrouded. <laughs> He's looking at your weapons, the weapons belt. You know, he wants to know how armed you are, what kind of leather armor you're rocking. What, what's going on here? She has a masterwork composite longbow strapped to her back with a mm -hmm. quiver of arrows. She mm. has a great sword on her side and a dagger strapped to her ankle. Okay. She uh, is very, very well armed. She's uh, wearing um masterwork leather armor and she also has a light steel shield so the bright colors is that like you've actually stained the leather or it's just other accessories and clothes it's, that make there's scarves and stuff like tied around her armor to gotcha flash. so you've kind of um <clears throat> uh print prince of persia upped your you know ketapesh yes. up up the uh, you know proud heritage okay awesome very awesome okay so yeah a Woman and old man, both hailing from the southeast. Actually, getting back to Kip, where are you from, Kip? Kip is from everywhere. <laughs> if you had to pick one place, let's call it, oh, I don't know, the place of your birth. Uh, let's see, was Kadira, Taldor, Andorian, uh, Osirian? The Inner Sea. The Inner Sea. I was born on a Sorry? I was born on a ship. You were born on ship? On a ship, yes. Okay. On Papa's, on Papa's ship. On Papa's ship. So no country. 
Water is in your blood. The sea. The inner sea specifically. Okay. Good to know. So, can I have a... Hmm. A ride check? A handle animal check, I guess? For driving the carriage? Lady Bordana? Absolutely. Let me just see what Not she hard. Has. Like the, the carriage is actually designed with the reins that, you know, like the horses are locked in place or whatever. You kind of, there's go and there's hard pull left and hard pull right. And, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it's just once the thing gets going, stopping it or making hard turns, but getting this thing to go and steering around, it's not overly difficult. 17. 17. No problem. On your way. Awesome. Awesome. Where are you taking them, driver? Where is it that you live again? I would talk to the back. <laughs> Down to... Back toward the library, I'm assuming. Well, yep. well yes. Um, d d d three streets down, four streets over. Stop at the second st uh, uh, sign there. Okay. And I would follow his directions. <laughs> We roll up on the library, or the archive, or whatever passes in the... I really should know this, and I do apologize. Um, but it's late, and it's closed. And this much is obvious when you guys pull up to the front. Do you have a key to get inside, or would you like to go somewhere else? Holds up a ring of keys, kind of stumbles through them. Uh, yes, it is. I, I did, didn't manage to lose them today, so yes, I, I, I can find my way in. All right. Well, you know where to find me if you need any more help. Kip, I, I will hand this carriage to you. And she will make her way off down an alley. So in your civilian outfit, you're just going to walk it? Yeah, she's going to walk out of sight. Okay. Oh, I'm oh, no, 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 not calling you she on that. But safely home. She I doesn't will, like the yeah, drunken no, fine. man. I, I, so I will <laughs> note to the others that it does seem odd that she made a big fuss over depositing a scholar and then just hands the taxi, as it were, over to you guys and like, good night, guys, I'm walking by. And just literally like just vanishes up an alley, gone. Leaving a semi-sober sailor, say that six times fast, and Lady Night Danger, because I forget your name already. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Arietti. Arietti? Yes. Firestarter? Fellstar. Fellstar. Sorry. It's the Afrit thing. Went went to that place. <laughs> she, she is an odd sword, isn't she? Mm, well, just, just type it in the chat, because I've been looking up for Lady Bordana like six times now, but it's handy because it's there. I will get you to change it. To, you know, there you go. Arietti Fellstar. Got it. Okay. Kip. Arietti Fellstar are glaring at each other in the back of this carriage. All right. And the carriage stopped moving. And Master Arf is making his way up to the door with these keys. What are you two doing in the carriage? She would uh, sniff. I smell whiskey. Do you have some on you? He always has whiskey with him. Oh, ha. I'll throw over a flask. Okay. Do you can mind? I get, can I get you a little warmer on the mic there, Kip? Uh, Kip insists. She would take a swig of the whiskey. Okay. It's good stuff. This dude does not drink cheap. Master Arif. Yes? yes? Up to the library. Keys. Stumble up to the stairway. Pull the key out. Stuff it into the lock. Give it a turn. Yes. Mm -hmm. This has been quite the evening, he mumbles to himself. Yes. I, I'm sure I'll appreciate it in the morning, but for now... For now, I, I, I simply don't. Okay. The door closes behind you. And two people are left drinking on or in the back of a stolen carriage it, right in front of the archive. Where well, the adventure... I... Sorry, go ahead. I believe I best get out and make sure that they don't come back to kidnap him. I did tell the watch that I would make sure he was safe. Yeah. He's kidnapped that old man in the past. I'm sorry? That man was kidnapped. He yes, he got... He, he was kidnapped earlier, to, earlier today, I believe. Why? He does not look wealthy. He's smart. But I can. Very intelligent. How can you make money from someone smart? I don't know. I just know <laughs> Kip, he was kidnapped. 
The sailor and, literally like is so intrigued with your argument, he doesn't even realize he's exiting the carriage with you, and the two of you slowly walk up the stairs. Master Eref is through the door and gone. Safely tucked think, away in the library, and you guys are like, let's check on Kip. So enthralled what? in this argument, he steps out of the carriage. You know, you guys are passing the bottle, making your way up the steps. And down comes down the street with two full bellies comes funny enough two pathfinders because we cut you know cut back to you know, the actual pathfinder meeting the actual captain drandal dregs pinched face that was hard to see and down the street comes an elf and a blood pelt cougar and they're just they kind of like stop half a block away and they're just standing there looking at you two And we'll see you next time, because at this juncture, this adventure could go anywhere off the rails, because it certainly isn't on the rails so far, but that's fine. Say goodnight, everybody. Master Good Arif, Master Arif, you might, you might want to lodge a complaint that the people in the street are being very loud, because you get yourself in the library, you get to your cot, you get to your little, you know, your little space or, or find a spot to crash, and like outside the windows, the upper windows, the night air kind of thing, you hear this loud conversation, you know, there's hoodlins on the street talking or whatever. You might want to head down to the watch and complain about that. Just saying.